Hi guys, welcome back to Between the Shelves. So I go by On the Shelf. And my name is Zach, you might also know me as Uchu Shelf. So it's been a really long time since we recorded one of these, <laughs> um, and we say this pretty much every time. It will always be a long time before. Um, <laughs> but the good news is that we've we've braved coronavirus we did it. Um, to get together and record one of these for you guys. <laughs> so recently, well last night actually, we watched... Promare, which yeah. is the new Studio Trigger movie, so that's prompted this podcast. So we're going to go through kind of like the the, the back catalogue of Gainax and Studio yeah. Trigger, if you like, and talk about some of the series. And they've got you know a, a, they're doing the Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven anime that's coming out in twenty twenty two, which is going to be interesting. Yeah, especially thinking of how that's going to work after watching um, what do you call it, Promare. Promare. Yeah, because I was saying to you yesterday, it's funny really when you think about the style of Studio Trigger, if someone's first introduction to cyberpunk is the Studio Trigger (laughs) anime, and then they think, I'm going to go and play this video game, it'll be legit nothing like that. No. Really weird. I haven't played a cyberpunk game, to be fair. Um, I probably I should. I don't think. I don't even know if if there is any. I think. I feel like this is the first one. Is it? I'm yeah. sure there's. Yeah. I'm not, I'll, you have to. Look I'll look it. I'll look, <laughs> like, I'll look like an idiot. I haven't played a game of all. No, there's not one out. All, all I know is Keanu Reeves is in it. That was. Oh that was yeah, that was like me. the selling point of it when they announced it. <laughs> It's like a time when he's literally in everything. I think he was in a SpongeBob movie. Was he? Oh yeah, he was, wasn't he? He was like tumbleweed in a yeah. SpongeBob movie or something. That was weird. Um, but yeah, what sort of um, what was your like first introduction to like Gainax and? Trigger? Um, probably. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Let me look it up here. Um, so once I see the name of it, I will remember it. Heck is, is it called Dead Leaves or something like that? I feel Dead. Like- okay, Dead Leaves is one of them, but the other one I'm thinking of is. Um, it's either Die Buster or Gun Buster. Yeah. I don't remember which one it was. I haven't seen that, actually. It was, it was so good. So I think that's what turned me on a mecha anime. And then I watched Gurren Lagann. And then that that was it. That's I, I had to watch everything by these people. Like, yeah. That was just a gem of an anime. Did you actually watch Gurren Lagann before Evangelion? And... Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the same for me. I feel like the first thing that I, I watched was um, Fooly Cooly. And then sort of like the same as you I was like I need to know what else these people have yeah. created because if you've never seen a Gainax or a Trigger anime they're really unique and you can kind of they pick are. out like we, we watched Promare yesterday and, and we just kept saying they're going to go to space at some point in this because it seems that that's it's the so so full of just the normal Gainax Trigger tropes and like I don't know it was so good it was such a good movie so, how do you want to do this? Shall we start in some sort of order? Do you want to go off what Wikipedia has? Let's go off Wikipedia. Should we start I with Gainax? St- I still, yeah, but I still feel like I haven't seen all that. I haven't many. seen much of Gainax to be we well, can talk about quite the a bit. Ones that we have. Um, did you watch Nadia's Secret of Blue Water? No, no, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> good start. Uh, there. Good start. Yeah, uh, which comes after is Evangelion, yeah. which is a. Amazing, like we one can, of the best. We anime. can discuss Evangelion. We, can, we if, could, if you want. Um, I think it's one of those series that's kind of timeless, and it speaks volumes that people are still trying to buy it now and looking forward to you know this release from Anime Limited now, considering how long ago it came out. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a there's a video that I saw a while ago, and this I forget who made it, but it was essentially you could live your entire life off of Evangelion merch. Oh, I saw that, yeah. Because, because there's they have so much, so much stuff. stuff, yeah. You could wear all Evangelion clothes, eat food that has Evangelion branding on it. <laughs> like it I remember fun. there being the uh, like an ad campaign for like Schick razors or whatever. <laughs> and it was like Gendo shaving himself and it's just clean shaven he's just holding one of the razors I was like yeah that would make me buy a razor if, <laughs> if, if it was possible. I know I think it, it's just like I don't know, it's crazy because I suppose it's one of those series that I feel like you have to have seen as a staple to have any opinion on anime. Yeah. But it, it's it's crazy in, in the fact that there's probably a lot of stuff since that it's not necessarily better, but has just taken what it did and kind of built on that exactly. idea. Like, I always say it's like the Attack on Titan of its time, almost. Like, it sort of had that following and fan base. Yeah. 
and it yeah. blew up as much as that kind of did. It's just it's there's a lot of anime from that era that you look back on, and it sometimes it's just fueled by nostalgia that it, you think it holds up good. But even Evangelion actually just holds up so well. Yeah, uh, especially up till now. Even the rebuild movies, like it diverges from the the uh, the anime series so much at some point, but it's still like just you know the same characters, the same kind of story, the same generic dread that yeah. the series seems to revel in but it just always oh, I don't know something special about that and that's why like, it's so ubiquitous would you, would you say that Shinji's like the original kind of whiny bitch character I'm sure there's whinier before him but he's like the embodiment of it now <laughs> yeah cause that's like that is one of the things that I that puts me off recommending it a little bit because I think he does get on your nerves like well he got on my nerves a little bit throughout the series and just yeah. like I can't do this I can't. I'm just like, the whole thing where he like runs away and then just comes back what the, like, what's there's the so many that, series yeah. like Gundam series where there's these like little kids that are younger than him just being badasses and being like yeah <laughs> let's go to war and he just doesn't <laughs> he doesn't want to help anyone I, I, I've I read the manga as well for Evangelion and I, I is it different from the anime because I haven't actually read them I own it but I haven't read it um, I feel like I've I can't remember. I feel like it was the same. I feel like it was Probably the is, same yeah. story, but it's just in manga form. There's a, uh, I haven't checked it out yet, but there's a light novel that's like an alternate ending to Evangelion that's out. I think Yen Press is putting it out. Really? Or Seven Seas, one of the two. It's like called Evangelion Anima or something like that. And I don't know, it just looks cool. It's supposed to be like an alternate ending and like the human instrumentality project at the end didn't happen and everything's carrying on and Ray's like a bad guy or something now oh. from what I read. So it's like... Okay, this is crazy, but I mean, I don't. I've never read light novels. I've, no. I've I've tried a couple of times with a few chapters of the Monogatari stuff, just because I couldn't really get into the anime. That's a podcast for another day. But, yeah, <laughs> but like I I I like the idea of light novels, but they're kind of a bit poorly written. I, I guess that's the point of them almost. So maybe if something's lost in translation, or it could be. Yeah, I want to read the Bleach ones though. I will go and read those, and I probably will check out the Evangelion ones. Are you uh, are you hyped for when the fourth movie finally? If and when out? it comes out, <laughs> it's, it was supposed to be out by now, and then miraculously COVID hit, and now it's not coming out for a while. But did I imagine it, or is there a theme park like an Evangelion theme park? That's I'm gonna look that up because that does sound vaguely familiar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see here. To me, though, it's still the most badass like cosplay you could do. I oh think yeah. The suits are just dope. They're way cooler than the Attack on Titan, like, cape thing that they've got going on. <laughs> Those capes are pretty cool, though, in their own right. Yeah, apparently there was an interactive exhibit. I don't know if it was, like, a park, though. Yeah. It was at an amusement, it was at an amusement park, though. Oh, that's cool. It's got... Yeah, I don't know why. I just have, I've, I'm just i I'm surprised there isn't an Evangelion Give it theme time. park. Yeah, Give there's, there's a Nintendo <laughs> one coming out. Which oh, is that, sick. that looks sick. I do want to... It's funny it, because it, the news for that gets drip fed. So like, like small, like there's a coin that spins now, and it's just a little. Coin. <laughs> I saw there's one that was like, "Look, it's Yoshi." And it's yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> like, they've not actually seen anything halfway decent yet, but yeah. Um. Yeah. What's the next sort of Gainax series? Um, I'm looking through them. Uh, the only other one I've there's only a few I've really watched. And I feel like an idiot now, but um. Did you watch uh, Magical Shopping Arcade of Benobashi? I've all? seen like two episodes. That's a weird one. I never I, finished I never it. finished it either. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, we, I'm just going to have to skip to Gurren Lagann. That's the next thing that I've yeah. watched. Yeah. Um, that is a fucking good show. Yeah. I did a, like I said, I, I did a whole um, podcast with Flip on, on Gurren Lagann. That, oh, right. That got yeah. lost in the ether. Uh, so I have a lot to say about it. I've forgotten a lot of what I did research about it. <laughs> Um, but it was kind of like there's loads of it's just bizarre it kind of escalates constantly and that seems to be the staple that Trigger have, have sort of carried on the legacy for Gainax in that yeah. they just you know if you think there's a huge robot transformation it's not the biggest that they're gonna go and, nope. and I bought the like ultimate edition blu-ray set for that and it comes with like this art book oh. and it has all of the like mech designs in it oh that's cool and uh you just look at the scale of it and it's like the original like robot that they're in. It's yeah. just minuscule <laughs> compared to at the end when they're throwing like galaxies oh, at each that other. That was such a good... It's the whole, everything about that series is just so good. Like, there's not a bad part of it. Except for maybe... Um, I can't even think of it. There was one episode I didn't it's like. It's like a beach episode. It was, a, it was the Hot Springs episode, I think. Yeah. Um, maybe... The, I don't remember the beach episode, but maybe that's... 
because I didn't like it. But <laughs> it's uh yeah no that was such a like just right out the gate it was just such a good series like it, it was a little bit slow in the first episode but once they like got to the surface it was just like but up but up but up yeah. like just constant ramping up it's like oh, okay here's this robot here's bigger ones by the way you can combine them and now you're the size of a galaxy it's like holy shit like, it feels, it's no slowing down it feels like it was it it was made for fans of like power rangers almost yeah well. i can see that yeah. like it's got like this like team that use robots and shit and then every sort of episode has a new like enemy monster that's been sent down from yeah. the, the big bad guy <laughs> that you eventually get to and i just like the um the shift midway through i think i've not really oh, there's yeah. not much like that like the first 12 13 episodes are a show in itself and it could have ended and just said that's it or like done a season two but it just kept going it was so it. confusing when i first watched it because like i was watching it when it was airing and then it got to like episode whichever one where they fought the spiral king yeah the first word starts off with like the his drill thing just like spinning yeah and uh it was like the end of that they beat him and I'm like is that it like that can't be it surely and then there's the time skip and everything but yeah wow that was a that was a really good episode actually now that I think about it I like the um the the way they've kind of since that that they seem to have kept a few things in the stuff they do just to, <laughs> to like a little nod yeah. a subtle nod to what they did before yeah like there seems to be Promare was full of it. Yeah, Pro- Promare, <laughs> it, we'll get to Promare, it's just got everything in it, but like there's, the I remember in, um, well, Kill a Kill and Promare, they, they have like a little animal mascot that they yeah, carry yeah. on, which is like the little mole thing they've got in Gurren Lagan and stuff, and there was like a drill in um, Promare, mm. and we've got a was it like scissors or something and kill the kill yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah. Like they always come up with really crazy like weapons and stuff. Um, what about Fooly Cooly? Did you ever watch? Fooly I did watch Fooly Cooly. I didn't watch the sequels though. No, I, I watched did, like the I first either. episode of the sequel and it just didn't vibe with me for some reason. But Fooly Cooly is just like a masterpiece. Like either it just jams so much into just like those six episodes and it's just all perfect. I remember it being just one of those series that's so short but kind of crams so much into every single episode yeah. and it has that typical Gainax like escalation of you think this is weird we'll show you fucking weird like <laughs> there's gonna be a robot coming out of this dude's head and like was it she like bashes him over the head with a guitar or something yeah she like just... runs over him and then hits him in the... oh it was great I just <laughs> love that that first thing where like Canty the robot comes out and it just starts fighting the other, like that hand robot. Yeah. That was so cool. I fucking love that. What's cool about it, though, if you, because I had to sort of Google it a little bit after I finished it, <laughs> it it's all some metaphor for puberty. I saw that, yeah. I was, that's a. Like the weird it changes works. you it go works. through as a kid. Yeah. But in, like, in Japan anime form, like, you think you're weird. Now you your voice is lower and you've grown pubes. Well, <laughs> this guy's got robot growing out of his face. <laughs> Could be worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I say, I, I didn't watch the sequels either. I watched the, I don't know which, like, it was like April Fools and Adult, Adult Swim aired one of them. And I think it was like the first episode of the third season. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It was just, it wasn't, it wasn't Fooly Cooly. It just, it was like in the universe, obviously, and like the same animators and stuff. But it just, it, something about it was not, Fully cool. Like I don't know. It's a different um, production, though, isn't it? It's production IG. Yeah, but IG was like they collaborated with Guy Nax on the yeah. first season, but it was still like all the same character designers and animators and stuff like that. So it should have. It's one of those things where it's like it should have been the same, but it kind of looked like it wasn't. I don't know. It's, yeah. Maybe I just got to give it like I know an honest mean. taste chance but a bit like the kind of straight to DVD sequels of Disney. That's films. what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do like Lion King too, but that's another, <laughs> another segue that we'll avoid. But like, yeah, I know what you mean. It's just it lost its sort of the heart to it, kind of yeah. what they were going for. Plus, it's it's just like a um, it's a once in a lifetime kind of thing that the, what they captured there. I remember you, you watch it and you never see anything quite like it again. No, exactly. So I don't think you can just try again. I also, and maybe this is a controversial opinion, quote unquote, but I didn't think it needed a sequel. I don't know why they did that. Like, it's it, it was cool. Like, it was like, okay, more fully Cooly, but it was, you know, it was so perfect, those six episodes. Like, yeah. you don't really, yeah, there's questions that you had at the end, like, where the hell did Adam and and what's her name go? And what the hell is going on for the first, <laughs> in yeah. the first place? But it was, you know, it was, that was part of the fun. 
I have never read the manga for that either, but I don't hear good things about it. I liked it. I like. I mean, I like the art style, but I like weird art styles yeah. to begin with. But it's uh, it's a, I think the same, maybe a little bit different. It's only like two volumes or something. I do like want that. to pick it up. I'm debating getting the two volumes, like single volumes, or just the like little omnibus book thing. Oh yes, yeah, I saw the omnibus. It's actually pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah, it's not too expensive. Yeah. Um, what have we got next? What's what Wikipedia we saying? Next? We probably skipped a couple. We did, but I also haven't. I didn't like a lot of these. I'm not realizing are part of like their uh, catalog. Yeah, I just haven't seen them. Uh, okay, uh, Panty and Stocking. Panty and Stocking. <laughs> That's wow. another one of those like super creative. What, just don't expect anything out of it. Kind of shows. I don't know. Was, I love it. I love it. It was so good. It's. It. I remember when it came out, and every like publication was saying, "Is this anime like it's made in Japan, but it, it looks oh, like yeah. a Western cartoon? It's kind of like the opposite of Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> yeah. Like it was. It looked like it was trying to appeal to to Western audiences almost. Yeah. The premise of it, for people who don't know, is just the weirdest shit ever. Yeah. It's like two girls that can, like, one of them's really slutty and, like, they use their underwear as weapons <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> who's the guy who's, like, got the afro? Who they oh, just... that's, uh, he's like a priest or something. I forget his name. I'm gonna look it up because it's gonna bug <laughs> me if I don't. But he's like, oh, it's Garter Belt. That's his name yeah. for the show. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's like a priest and he lets them, because I think the thing is they're angels and they're trying to have, they have to collect so many points or something before they can go back to heaven or something like that yeah but like panty just wants to sleep around and, and shit like that and then stocking just wants to eat cake and stuff all the time yeah they're just like terrible people and there's a there's a whole like i, I remember there's being an episode just had about sperm or something yeah yeah <laughs> that, if that puts it into context it was like hailed as like the south park of anime i remember yeah, when it came i remember out. that um because it on the front front of the cover it just looks like two cutesy, like, magical girls almost, but then yeah. there's the 18 certificate, and you're thinking, well, what the fuck is this going to be about? Oh, Japan. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I was with my girlfriend at the time when I watched that, and if I did watch that with her, she probably wouldn't be with me now. <laughs> it's one of those series. But... It's good. Except the ending. That was a piss-off. Like, it's like, okay, everything's resolved. That final fight, by the way, was just phenomenally animated. <laughs> like, just one of the best animated things I've ever seen. Yeah. And then... That's like, okay, everything's good, the world's saved, and then the ending happens. I won't spoil it if everyone gets to go watch it, but uh, a character kills another character and then fucks off, and that's it. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? And they're like, to be continued, and then Gynax split into Trigger, and yeah, that was the last of it. not to do it. So yeah, moving on to Trigger, um, which is the kind of uh, same studio. It, it like split in several studios. I think it was like Imaishi... And, like, basically all the Gurren Logan people just were like, we want to make, like, good anime. We're going to go do our own thing. <laughs> they yeah. just started their own studio. Uh, they had a strong start with Kill a Kill, though. Yeah. I think Kill, Kill a Kill is one of my favorite series, but it's fucking weird it's again. So weird. I have the, like, really nice um, limited box set that oh, I yeah, released I saw that. that's, that like, nice. heavy as shit. And, like, each part was really expensive, but... It's got, like, my favourite mascot in it, like, the Guts, the perverted dog. Oh, I love that it dog. It just has nosebleeds <laughs> every time there's, like, boobs and stuff. And it took... it. I think the thing that's off-putting, and it is a bit unnecessary, is just the amount of fan service in Kill the Kill. Like, it took it a bit further. I, than... I would argue that that's kind of the fun in it. I'm not someone who likes fan service. I almost sometimes actively avoid it, but it just... It was... It was just, it would work, because it was like, yeah, I was trying maybe doing it for the fan service, but I was also doing it just to kind of poke fun at it, I thought, was like... Yeah. Because it's like, look at this very overt fan service, and then there was like the whole group of like naked guys. Yeah. <laughs> at the one point, I was like, they're just taking the piss, really. Yeah, because the, the main character, when she kind of powers up, her like outfit just completely gets shredded, and essentially she just has two like suspenders almost that just cover her boobs, <laughs> yeah. and that's it, and, and, a, and a really skimpy skirt, and it was like... She didn't she have to embrace her nudity to become more powerful or something? It was some weird. some some stupid like that. It was, yeah, yeah <laughs> that hence the nosebleed pervert like perverted dog. And her like best friend is just uh, Mako was just really weird. She'd just like stand in the background and do loads of like crazy like just moving around hand just like, actions. Yeah. yeah. Like she was funny. It's it was just one of those things that I think it came out at the right time as well, because there wasn't anything for a while in between 
like Gainax's last series and this one that, yeah. that sort of hit the same notes as like Kill Yeah, it was, it was quite a while, I think, because like, I think the last really good Gainax series was probably Gurren because I can't think of anything original that came from Gainax after that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Evangelion movies you can't count because I think Hideaki Anno took those to Kara or whatever his new studio is called. And then, yeah, I can't think of anything, anything else. So yeah, that was like a good six years or so. Yeah. Which is, it's weird to think that Kill a Kill aired seven years ago. I know, I feel like that was when I kind of, because I've, I've always been into anime, but I feel like when that came out, that's when I started getting into it again. Yeah. And watching it weekly and stuff. Yeah. And it was probably around the time that Attack on Titan season one was out, I imagine. Or I think it was the same year, yeah. yeah. Yeah, something like that. That's when I was like getting big back into anime again. Yeah. But the uh, the show is similar to, to Girl Lagan. It's got that kind of like <laughs> same vibe, same enemy of the week to defeat and then does it go to space oh yeah it goes to space yeah, <laughs> yeah. if it's tr- if it's trigger organic yeah. it's gonna go to space in some way yeah it was uh, it was funny how they went to, i think they just had like a final fight in space and then they like started crashing down or yeah something like that. it was it was funny it's like they're like quick how can we get these guys to space it's about fighting clothes <laughs> all right just put them in space fuck it we'll figure it out later I did like the touch though that the uh, the outfit that she wears is like alive. And yeah, that it, was funny. It would yeah. like talk to her and stuff and that like was... body shame her and things. It was pretty cool. I, just, I, I like that, but then you're like, yeah, this is weird. This is just you know anime, and then it's like, oh no, there's a whole race of clubs people. Yeah, <laughs> and shit like that. I was like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, and some like over like overarching enemy that which I think was her mom. Yeah, that I remember it. Oh yeah, because they ended up being sisters. In didn't, the she, end. didn't she want everyone to be? like consumed by these clothes yeah, or something like that. so then to defeat her everyone had to be naked like oh that, yeah that's that was, that was the whole point of the like the naked guys yeah that was the that was the main reasoning for it yeah it's <laughs> fucking awesome i really like the teacher in that as well the mysterious kind of teacher with the blue hair oh, and yeah. sunglasses that were <laughs> yeah. actually part of a secret organization yep. yeah that was cool when you say it out loud like that it really does it's really hard like, to describe a lot of like anime in general be like yeah so it's about this and everyone looks at you like I don't know, that's weird. Yeah, like, when no. we get on to Premiere, we watched it yesterday, and I'm still not 100% sure what happened. I'm going to have to watch it again. Just <laughs> like, I was so just, like, like just awestruck by how pretty it was. Yeah. And then it was like, wait, wait, what? And I was, like, trying to follow along. But, uh, yeah, what's next here for Trigger? Did you watch Luluko? No. Didn't watch Did you watch Kiznaiver? I have Kiznaiver. I've it. seen a couple. It's about some kids who, like... They're, they're in this sort of experiment almost where they all have bracelets on, I think. And it's like they share each other's pain. Oh, okay. So it was like this social experiment to try and make them empathize with each other. Oh, uh, okay. It's clever. It's another weird one, but it's not one that's talked about all that much. Yeah. It's on my list to go and watch. But I should watch it, really. Yeah. Um, did you, you watched Darling and the Franks, actually. You finished yes, that recently, yes. didn't you? Yeah. We have a lot to talk about. A lot this to talk year. about. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a collaboration, isn't it? It wasn't just... No, it was um, it was either A1 or A1 Cloverworks or whatever the yeah. heck the studio's called and, and Trigger. But you can very clearly tell what's Trigger and yeah. what's like A1 when you're watching it. Yeah, so Darling and the Franks was like... I thought it was like, for the most part in the beginning, a throwback to Evangelion. It's That's what like, it felt like. Yeah, let's get some kids in fancy suits in robots and have them fight aliens Mm -hmm. but then the weird the weirdness comes with a sort of the fact that they have to be in a a boy girl team (laughs) and it and it seems like their strength is is dependent on their relationship (laughs) with their partner it gets weirder (laughs) yeah i noticed i noticed something was off when the initial turrets for the main like hub that they live in look like boobs yep and the yep. guns look like nipples and i was like there's something not right here <laughs> um another series that's kind of totally different after the second half as well like you don't like the second half of it is that right so i i it's not that i don't like it it's just hard to justify liking it you yeah <laughs> yeah i know what you mean i think i rolled with it because i was like i've come this far I want to see how it ends. I I'm, think that's pretty much why I finished it. It was like, I've invested this much time into it. I might as well stick it out. There's just a lot of... The things that were weird, was weird about Darling in the Franks was just the kind of character relationships. Like, you'd have these really sick moments where they're all, like, fighting, you know, the the, the Galaxosaurs or Kalaxosaurs, however you oh, say Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, the 
the mech designs were interesting, mm -hmm. you know, pretty weird. They looked a bit human at the same time, but then you have that alongside just this rom com like teen drama sort of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> thrown and in. It uh it's been two years since it aired, so I'm gonna assume that if if you haven't watched it, skip ahead a bit. Um I'll put a timestamp in the description below so you can skip yeah. ahead. But basically uh, one of the characters finds a book when they, there's like a beach episode. One of the characters finds a book, and it's like a book about how conception happens. <laughs> and then she decides that she doesn't want to have a baby with her current like mecha partner. Switches partners with someone else and gets pregnant. And then the show goes completely tits up from there. Yeah, like I don't even know. Like they just randomly introduced like that floating space like shape enemy kind of thing. I don't even know what the hell to call it and then she ends up having the baby I think yeah yeah, yeah she and has a baby but she has her memories wiped oh yeah that's right they, they yeah. erase her memories because she's not allowed to sort of do that that's right oh yeah because they weren't allowed to know that like they could have children or yeah know, some, they, some they were really just like tools like for yeah. like fighting they weren't supposed to be oh wasn't it that like it was, uh, I'm probably remembering this wrong but it's like their hormones got in the way of how they piloted or something like that. That sounds, sounds about right. Something stupid like that. Yeah. But then, you know, they went to space, of course. Like, yeah. It was like they had a perfectly, like, it, it still fit in the story. And then, like, the last three episodes when they introduced, like, that new bad guy that was, like, from space. And then they went to space. It was like, what the? Yeah, what I didn't really know what was happening. It just kind of rolled with it. But then, yeah, like, he gets the blue horns and everything. And then he, there's, like, a thousand year time skip of them just like walking the aisle kind of thing because she's like the big robot now and she's got like the wedding dress and everything <laughs> that was weird it was so strange the weirdest design it was weird though because like everything's shooting at her and she's just like comatose and he's like dying and they're, like, they're just moving slowly through space i'm like what the fuck yeah <laughs> like i don't, I don't, know, don't like, like the friends like go and rescue them or something at the towards the end like go even, to space I everyone goes to space in that show i don't even remember i did enjoy the like um, the flashback and the fact that they met each other when they were kids. And, oh yeah, that's and they, right. Yeah. They made the him forget about her, and, yeah. and she did. She just like get battered to death or something, so she forgot about him. I, can't I would imagine. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, yeah. But like, I liked the character designs. The characters were really interesting. That was one thing that stood out to me. They were all really cool. Like, yeah. Um, you still think that what's her name was it Ichigo was better than Zero Two? I will die on this hill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I disagree. Ellie gives me shit for because she loves Zero Two like, <laughs> for the entirety of that show, and I think she did this. It didn't bother me so much, but she did it to the point where it was like really annoying. She would just call me darling all the time, and it was in the same like darling. I can't do that, so, you know. But like, it was like yes, it's cute. You don't have to keep doing it, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then I just kind of said it as a meme that I liked Ichigo better, and it just kind of stuck because I realized she was kind of the better person anyway. But you know. Yeah, she was better for him. Yeah, but, like I mean, he wouldn't be dead in a floating space wife. Yeah, <laughs> if he went with her. Let's just that put it that true. way. Um, did you watch Gridman. Gridman. Uh, I've seen about four or five That's episodes. About what I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> we can talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, Gridman's cool. They're doing a sequel to to Gridman. Yeah, they? it's called like Dinazion or something like that. But I don't know if it's like a direct sequel, or if it's just like a set in the same universe. It looks cool. In any case, like I I didn't grow like i don't know much about like tokusatsu or stuff like that to begin with because i know it's like um like an ultraman spinoff or something like that i think it is is or, it something like that See, I, don't, I, don't I don't even get that from watching it i it, well i think it's because it's like it, the way that gridman like grows yeah it's the same way that like ultraman grows but ah, okay. i'm pretty sure i could be completely wrong and talking out my ass so just ignore me completely but it was like the first the few episodes i did watch were bloody cool i think the last one i watched um like, it was, like, the main character had, like, died or something like that. Yeah. And it was, like, the tone for the next episode was, like, everyone was, like, sad because he's dead. But then he was just, like, stuck in the computers. Yeah. I, it's been a while since I actually watched it. I do need to finish it. But. I I think it was one of that I kind of started. And I always have this thing where if I think a series is going to be really good and I'm going to really like it, I'll want to buy it. Yeah. So I think I just held off watching it online to sort of go and buy it. And then... Is it Manga UK or something? Someone did me dirty and they released like a really nice edition, but it was like 60 quid. Ew. And then just a standard Amray, which was like 30 quid. And I was like, that's still too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. pay that much. So I'll wait till it goes cheap and then I'll binge it and I'll definitely have more. I do want to watch it. Like, I didn't. It's one of those shows, like, you ever have those where you, like, you watch something, you really like it, but then you just don't watch it for whatever yeah. reason? It's just, I don't know why. But there's another show that they Trigger just put out on Netflix called Brand New Animal, which I haven't seen. 
Is that like a furry? It's like the furry one. They like turn into furries. Or is that they out are. now? Then? I don't know if it's like out yet, like in the like legally, but I know that some of it is out in yeah. Japan. I don't know if it's like airing weekly or something like that. Apparently, it's okay. I I don't know. It, it probably is. This this and the new trend now isn't there with furry series with uh, fucking B stars and B stars ruined it. Everything's yeah. gonna be an animal now. Like, did you see? Um, this is a little bit of a segue. But did, <laughs> did you watch the PS5? You did watch the PS5, like yeah, the real I did. thing. Yeah, and there's that that weird game that they showed off that was essentially like um, Thirteen Reasons Why, but with dinosaurs. Oh yeah, that was weird. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was a weird. Yeah, it just looks. I'm like... gonna, I want to check it out because it was like I was like, oh, this is weird. But then it was like it looked like it was like an allegory for like when the comet hit or the asteroid hit and killed all the dinosaurs. So I think that was pretty cool, but. It just looked like a teen drama, though, yeah. with, like, dinosaurs. <laughs> it's like, like, that reveal, that whole lineup was just... There's, like, one or two good games in that. Um, Tokyo Ghostwire looks sick. Like, yeah. I wasn't going to buy it, but, like, the price isn't too bad for it. Yeah. Really. So I might end up just getting it, even the digital one. But, I don't know. I think the problem with most things, like, like trends like that, is that a lot of shows will just use them to try and make their story interesting without creating an interesting story. Like, there was Could this be, yeah. huge trend with Isekai shows, and they were just, we're just, we're still getting bombarded with them now. Not as much, though. You know, and like, even the ones we do get now are all right, actually. Yeah, yeah. But I think someone's obviously latched onto this idea of, oh, furries are in now. So, like, let's just put it in our show. I was hoping, like, samurai or something would come yeah. back, like, something good, not, like, fucking animal people. I like, want the days of, like, the old school just action samurai shit like Afro, Afro samurai and ninja scroll and like Blade of the Immortals cool like I keep singing the praises of that yeah. I, I wouldn't mind a vagabond anime I'm surprised they it's, haven't it's, done that yeah. I mean we're getting a lot of just like random scene and stuff cause like just getting off on a completely other tangent but like the guy who leaked that uh, Eden Zero and Tokyo Avengers was getting an anime both those came true, but he also said Fire Punch and Chainsaw Man are getting anime. Yeah. How the hell is Fire Punch going to work? <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a, the most controversial stu- like anime. It's, that... it's going to... First of all, it has to be more than 13 episodes, I yeah. think. Otherwise, you're jamming too much in. But if they split it up in like two 12-episode seasons, the end of the... Spoilers if you watch Fire Punch. I'll put a timestamp again, blah, blah, blah. But um, the end of the first, I guess, half of the Fire Punch anime would be where what's her name says I want to reset the world to make a new Star Wars movie yeah <laughs> and everyone will be like what the fuck and then nobody will watch the second half but the second half's still okay but still I don't know the ending was weird I, I love it for I that, love it it's, for that it's weird because well it's like it, it pulls you in with like all just like the nonsensical violence and just random everything is just awful kind of world and that just drops you on that and it's like four volumes in I might as well keep going right <laughs> yeah it's like the lost effect because I watched lost when that aired oh yeah and okay. I got like five seasons deep and then the, the island disappeared <laughs> and I just went what why and then I need they to went finish back that. in time I need to finish that I only watched the first season but like someone told me that like they get off the island and then they go somehow go back yeah. to the island I'm like what the fuck's the point there's, of that there's then? loads of flashbacks and you see like some of the main characters off the island and you think that it's set before they got there and then they actually meet each other and you go, wait a minute, how do they know each other? And and one of the characters goes like, we've got to go back. back to, we've got to go back, Kate. We've got to go back to the island. Oh, and you go, God. what the fuck like, is happening? They do that a lot. Yeah. You think, you know, that's why I love it. It's still, that's probably why I love Fire Punch because I love Lost. I'm like a glutton for punishment with, let's just make it up as we go. It, it's like the interdimensional cable fucking yeah. manga. <laughs> that's really it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess let's jump into the, the main thing we were ramping up to talk about. Was the, both of us watched Promare yesterday. Yeah. And I think it was the, we, it was the first time you watched it, right? Yeah. yeah it's the first time I watched it. And both of us didn't know what we were expecting. It definitely wasn't what we watched, but I fucking enjoyed every second of it. <laughs> yeah, I think that the initial thing that stood out was the animation style yeah. that they went for here. It's like a complete meld of... Panty and Stocking versus like Kill the Kill Girl and Lagan. Yeah. Like they've took the character designs that they had before, but then put this cool shell cell shaded effect on it almost, and it looks sketchy and Western and three yeah. D. And I don't normally go in for CG. The CG stuff. worked here because it was like all cell shaded and it just it fit. It just it, it didn't. There were times where it didn't even look three D, and when it did, it's like who gives a shit? Because like there's sometimes 
in anime where they use 3D and it's just so jarring and obvious. Yeah. And you're like, this is stupid. It pulls me right out of it. But, oh my god, man. Promare, just so good. I think what stood out as well, just how much they crammed into it. Like we were saying, it could <laughs> quite easily be a series. Like they could just spread it out across 25 There were episodes. times where it felt like it was like a compilation movie. Yeah. And it was like they just jammed all the good parts of a series into one thing. But that was probably what made it like so good. If there was like any really there was like a one part where it was kind of like a little bit boring like when they were like ju- not boring but like slow yeah and it was like after that first initial fight and they're just like hanging out at the pizza place or whatever yeah but then right after that it's like whoop right yeah. up again like so yeah the the overall premise for the film was sort of as i said it was both what we weren't expecting at all <laughs> yeah. it's like a world where people just spontaneously combust and they have this, like, ability... What do they call them, then? Like Oh, the burnish. The burnish, yeah. yeah. They have this ability to kind of just harness this, like, fire that they have. And from that, there's this terrorist group, like, the... The Mad Burnish. Yeah, the you just mad, gotta love the, all the random English names they use yeah. in this, by the way. The Mad Burnish that use this burnish ability to just burn down, like, places... They never really explained what or why, like, what their motives were. Like, I didn't get that I think it film. was... I think... I, and maybe I'm getting this wrong, but there was like when they explained what the Promare was, like that alternate dimension where there was like the aliens that like fueled their desire to burn shit or something like that. I think maybe that was it. I don't know, but it was. It, we're gonna have to watch it again, I think, because I think we were just engrossed with how like the like just off the wall and insane and all the pretty colors, obviously. Yeah, like as well, the first, but, like, the first twenty minutes will like oof. blow your lid. Like I yeah. not, I kept thinking, I wonder if they've used all of their their kind of budget on the first half an hour and, and they did they didn't it was it, great it stays like that the whole way through oh. they've got these like me- not mech suits but they remind me of if you played the kingdom hearts games mm. there's there's these suits that some of the um enemies wear that kind of have horns on them like these oh yeah, suits. yeah yeah they yeah. look like that but they ride motorbikes oh they... that's when they first introduced like the mad burnish guy oh, yeah that was so fucking cool they ride motorbikes and use like fire to make fire swords and then the heroes well the initial heroes of the story are yeah. like firemen essentially yep but they get shot out of like fire engines that have like a huge cannon on them and they'll fire <laughs> mech suits at the fire to fight it and use ice bullets and stuff. Oh, so and cool. Everything about it is the coolest shit you will ever see. In and a there was film. like they just had all like the Gynax tropes. Like it, we we were talking about this earlier but how like Promare had throwbacks to like character designs, but there was like the main guy Gallo is obviously like one for one with Kamina. He's yeah. Like, um the pink haired girl whose name I'm forgetting the one with the sister who was the scientist yeah uh was pretty much exactly like uh yoko as yeah, well from Girl Girl. um that one the bad guy we'll get into the bad guy the head yeah <laughs> he he looked like um the spiral king yeah um and then the main the 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 main guy with the blonde hair the kind of champ is it like chancellor or something or governor oh the, the governor yeah, yeah yeah he looks like gamagori from yeah Gamagori's yeah yeah that's it with the blonde hair slip yeah. back um, when his it, eyes open. Yeah, yeah, when his eyes open, yeah. Because his eyes are kind of a bit like Brock's for most of the <laughs> yeah. Pokemon. Um, but then, yeah, the, we don't want to spoil it too much, but the kind of, the later half of it, there's a bit, well, not even the later half, it's after like the first 40 minutes. It's, yeah. There's yeah, it's another like, change, like shift, is as to what, well, we could leave a timestamp and discuss it, I suppose. Yeah, I'll put timestamps in here, guys, if you want to avoid spoilers, just check those out in the description. If you're listening on Spotify or whatever, if I get around to uploading it on Spotify... Shit out of luck. <laughs> you know? Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. But, um, but they, they, they essentially, the main guy, the the governor, has decided that the world's going to end soon because the magma's getting out of control <laughs> and he blames the burnish, you know, for, for what's happening to the world. So he's going to create a spaceship. Yeah, that's right. They go to space in this. <laughs> and it, he can only save 10,000 people and, and take them all into space. But the way that they power the spaceship is what gets really interesting, right? Oh, that was cool. that was interesting. Yeah. So they they essentially kidnap the the burnish uh, and arrest them uh, under the pretense of their their terrorists and their horrible people, a bit kind of like X Men, where you know they're afraid of them and they want to yeah. experiment on them. But they like put them in this machine that spins them really <laughs> fast and harnesses their like flame power to fuel the spaceship. Um, I think where I kind of went a little bit like what was when they, they, <laughs> they uncover this lab and it's got this the kind of computerized version of oh, the, the, the scientist, scientist yeah, yeah. in the lab that yeah. explains to them that you know 
the, the fire that they use comes from another dimension <laughs> and it's actually alive. <laughs> like, it's fucking crazy. It was crazy. so funny. I love that fight they had with the governor where he's, like, explaining his plan. Like, yeah, we gotta do all this. And he's using all these, like, his, like, mecha powers or whatever. Like, he blows the mountain up to terraform it or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, why couldn't you just do that? And they're like, he's like, no, it didn't work. And then he's like, well, why couldn't you just cool all the magma? No, I tried that. It's like, no, you just don't want to, like, you just want to, like, get the fuck off Earth. Like, And everything, everything has its, like, uh, attack name and, 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 and you know. He, <laughs> what did he call the Mecha? He, he names oh. the Mecha, like, fuck, I have he's to like, look it up. Get, oh, was the, what was the, I forget the guy's name, one second here. Um, it was Gallo, what was the other one? Leo. Oh, it was like Gallo, de, Leo de Gallo. That's what it yeah, was, Leo I think. De Gallo. He's like, so Leo de Gallo, and Leo's just like, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Like, we're in the middle of a fight. Yeah, it, it's sort of like a, a little piss take about, like, Gurren Lagann and how yeah. how that character is, um, you know, over the top, and everyone just seems to go along with it instead of going, what the fuck are you talking about? I think yeah. the highlight of the film for me was, like, one of the, one of the enemies... Um, is this really built guy <laughs> yeah. in a mech suit and the next minute like he, he, he just pops out of the mech suit and he's actually just got a massive head but a tiny so body so unpredictable like I just didn't see it coming it just caught me off guard and yeah. just howling with laughter it was so good it's just it, it just has everything I like, struggle to think of one part of that movie I didn't like honestly I but. think it's difficult to recommend at the same time because if you don't know Trigger or Gainax and you've not seen any of this stuff before even still like, you, you might if you, be like what the fuck is this if you want just like an introduction to how fucking insane Gainax and Trigger can be this yeah just why it's an hour and a half two hours I don't remember but just sit down and watch it back to back. You're gonna like be glued to the screen the whole time. Like, I think there was a point where I was just watching. I don't think I blinked <laughs> like a good fifteen minutes or something like that. But even just like the character, like just the character arcs and the story altogether, which is even we're talking about just like all the animation stuff and the stuff that's funny. But like the story was fantastic. Yeah. Like especially the character, the way the characters progress, because like it all started off like really above board. It's like yeah, we have the you know the good characters, the governor guy who saved the main character's life, and he wants to like be do good. We have the terrorists and like all this stuff. But then, I always love this trope when, like, the good guy and the bad guy work together. Like, when Viral and yeah. Simon did it in uh, Gurnlagen, it was, like, oh, it's so perfect. But, like, when they got together, they go under to that, uh, the scientist's lab, and they get that mecha, and that they have to pilot. Because, like, I think the thing was, like, the scientist worked with the governor. Yeah. And they were developing the thing where it was, like, they could use the burnishes flames without hurting them. Yeah. And that's what, like, the mech they used was. But, oh, it was so cool. It was really good. It, it was just like pure creation. Like, they literally just did whatever the fuck they wanted with that. <laughs> there was a few times where you were just like, how do they come up with this yeah, shit? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I think that the only thing I would have liked was that I wanted it to be longer. Like, I wanted it to be a series. There's a lot of oh, other members of the team, like both teams, like the fight, like the Burnish and the, oh, yeah, yeah. the firefighters, like some of the minor characters that didn't really get developed all that much. Mm -hmm. There's like a, a guy. I remember I had glasses and blue hair on the fire brigade team. And yeah, he was cool. He looked cool. He wasn't really in yeah, it at he, all. He was like just there a couple of times. Yeah, but. it could have just been longer. That's all. But yeah. that's like that's not a bad thing, really. When you watch things, if you just think, I wish I was more of that. It's done its job, really. Yeah, it's not made you think. Oh God, I'm glad it ended. Even if it was just like a short six episode series, where it yeah. could have expanded on a few things a little bit. But I don't know. It still worked. I liked it. Just yeah. the same. So yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Um, we're just going to sort of round off, I think, with you know what we've got going yeah. on our channels. You know, we we've not been putting out all that much lately, but we have. We're not we're not gone. You know, we, yeah, we're we don't here. put out these podcasts all that often, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to make them. <laughs> you know, we just we have lives to live. Leave us alone. <laughs> it's also like the both of us just forget we have a podcast sometimes, yeah. and someone will be like, "When's the next between the shots?" Be like, "Oh shit, right." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were just like, we were hanging out, and it was just like, whatever, let's let's bang one out anyway. Yeah, I think we had so much to say about Premiere that yeah. it just really made sense that we record a, pod a podcast about it. I gotta and watch that again. So, yeah. So fucking good. I really want the, the collector's box set of it. But I don't buy anime, but I might buy that, yeah. to be fair. It sold out, apparently. I'll but find I, it. I think I'll be able to find <laughs> it somewhere, for yeah. sure. So what do you got coming up on your channel, then? Uh, I had... Four videos recorded and they oh, all no. got destroyed. <laughs> um, like I lost the audio, but I'm gonna re-record them. So I'm yeah. probably gonna do a uh, a, vi a little kind of piece on digital manga because I've read a lot of digital manga lately. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe 
another haul soon, but I'm like buying a house, so I don't have all that much money. <laughs> I'm probably going to do some reviews, so you know when I finish things, because I'm kind of in the middle of a lot of series, mm. so I've not really got anything to review yet. And then I like doing the uh, the monthly wrap up stuff. So those I'll are probably, fun. I'll yeah. probably do another one of those and throw that in there. And I don't think that Manga Wars is dead either, because I kind Ooh. of I I started off with those if you've ever like watched my videos from the beginning like last year that was what i was my thing at the beginning yeah, i like the controversy of it yeah. I, I essentially compare series what are you going to compare it next uh, the next one that i've got lined up is one piece and dragon ball oh <laughs> so two like rest in peace yeah, legendary <laughs> series and people will be really opini- opinionated on that and then i'm probably going to compare blade of the immortal and vagabond because that'll be a good one kind of like that'll be a good one yeah yeah what about you what have you got coming um i've got you know uh what the hell do i got I've got a couple of reviews coming out. I got an Ajin video I'm working on actually because I'm reading through that and I bloody love that. It is such a it's good so series. It's fucking good, man. Like, I'm, I just, it's one of those series I regret not reading sooner, but I'm glad I'm reading it now. Um, I've got my podcast with my second podcast with my brother. Um, <laughs> what the hell is it called? Kyodai Cast. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why I forgot that. Uh, we just do that whenever like he's awake and I'm awake because we, we have a five hour time difference. So whenever we find time, we just do it. Um, I've got a third podcast coming out, uh, which uh, I don't know if it'll be announced by the time this is out, so I just want to say what that is, but keep an eye out on my channel for information on that. Busy guy. A busy guy, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to have to quit my job. Like, quit. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have time to work. i got too many podcasts going on. Um, I'm probably going to film a haul when I get home from today, um, now that I have, you know, haul material. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's a good shout. Yeah, and then i got a couple more reviews. So, uh, I got a whole list of shit just written down. Whether or not I get to them yeah. is is the thing. <laughs> that is the thing. We we both like. I'm a definitely a procrastinator. Oh yeah. And yeah. Well, you have to be in that mindset, and, and yeah. And you work in a creative role anyway, so it's difficult to get into a creative there are, mindset. There are days where like I just. It, there are weeks where I don't do anything creative with my job. It's just all like mindless, menial numbers crap. But and then that's fine when I get to the week. It's like yeah, I need to create something. But like if I'm doing just design work all week. I'm going to be watching TV all weekend. I'm not doing any work on video. So uh, I'm going to try and put out more stuff, though, um, just in general, because there was, like, that month or two where I went by, like, not making anything. It just sucked. Yeah. You know? So. But, yeah, for sure, we, we will definitely be doing more of these. Yeah. Don't think that it's, like, the end of it just because it's months between. We them. will see you at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll do something because we kind of we don't live too far away from each yeah. other now and you know we they're, they're relaxing things a little bit so we'll probably meet up again you know if, if there's out. not a second outbreak yeah like, which you know there might be fingers crossed <laughs> I've seen the pictures of people at the beach like on, in Bournemouth or something they were oh there. that was so stupid yeah there's literally Just, hordes of people like uh, a zombie movie or something it's like if you get COVID you shouldn't go to the doctor you shouldn't yeah. if you purposely go out and get with it get COVID you shouldn't be able to go to the doctor sorry that was <laughs> controversial take I'll maybe censor out but you know <laughs> anyway um, yeah any yeah where can people find you um, I am on Twitter at on the shelf 2 yeah this is where it gets <laughs> I love this every, time, <laughs> every time every um, time on the shelf 2 on Twitter on the shelf 64 on Instagram and I think it's just on the shelf 64 on YouTube. But like, just type in on the shelf in the search bar. You'll find but all one word. Otherwise, yeah. you'll just find other people's shelves yeah. and you don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, me, a little bit simpler. You can find me at Utu Shelf everywhere Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Yeah, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't do this. I'll change it up. I'll be like Utu Shelf. 426 on Instagram. Do you know what I did though? I looked up the other day who actually has on the shelf, just on the shelf on Twitter. Yeah. And it's not even a used account. Like someone oh, just made annoying. it. Didn't use it at all, not tweeted anything. Like, I was like, there's um <laughs> there's another kid with my name back from where I'm from. When my name's not that like unique or anything, but like he has like my name, first name, last name is Twitter. Yeah. Never fucking used it. He just made it posted two things about, like, him smoking weed or something, and that was it. I was like, you little uh, fucking yeah, son of a I bitch, you know? But yeah. Uh, yeah, we can wrap it up here, then. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. You can, of course, check us both out where we just told you to, and we will see you in a few months. Yeah. Peace. Take it easy. <laughs>